Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Indianapolis for the 2023 selection show for Division II football. I'm Brendan Gulick. It is great to be with you on NCAA.com. We officially launch our national championship field tonight by unveiling this year's bracket. It's been another great season of ball all across the country. The biggest powers in the sport have continued to cement themselves atop those national rankings. Ferris State, the two-time defending national champions, Bulldogs are pretty darn good again this year. But might this finally be the year that the Ore Diggers can bring a championship back to Golden, Colorado? Or might Grand Valley State win its first title since 2006? Perhaps Harding, Slippery Rock, Benedict can make a magical run here this fall. Resumes are complete, and at this point, you're either in or you're out. There's no more negotiation. And if you're in, it doesn't matter how clear cut the case was, or if you felt like you snuck your way into the last spot available, the name of the game moving forward is survive and advance. Welcome to the best time of the year. In just a few short weeks, our national championship game returns to McKinney Stadium in Greater Dallas for the fifth consecutive season. And once again, our field accounts for 28 programs from four regions around the country, where the top seed in each region receives a first round bye. Then the four teams that emerge from those regional tournaments will be reseeded for the national semifinals on December 9th. Those two winners will play in McKinney Stadium uh, on December 16th. The national championship game, by the way, will be televised live on ESPNU. Before we go any further, we've also got a special guest with us tonight to help shine some light on these first round matchups. You certainly have read his work before. Wayne Cavati joins us in studio. I'm sure you're familiar with his work here on NCAA.com. Wayne, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time here tonight. And I'm interested what, you, uh, what you're most interested to see when you get a chance to to see this bracket here you know it's it's what i say every year and it's why i love the d2 football format and it's chaos we had we had a nice <laughs> uh easy going season it seemed like for about eight weeks in and even as someone who writes about it you were what do i write about this week everyone that was supposed to win kind of won and then the last three weeks including you know yesterday which was <laughs> where the top 25 just blew up it's been it's been utter chaos the last three weeks when it seems like the games really mattered for these resume building um, the, the games to get into the tournament. So I hope that just continues over the next few weeks right up to the championship game. Chaos is fun for all of us that aren't directly involved in it. I'm sure it's a little more frustrating or, uh, you know, uh, adverse for those who are competing. So looking forward to seeing how the chaos unfolds. We are ready to unveil our bracket. All right, let's begin with our very first region. This is in the top left-hand corner where the top seed in this region is Tiffin. Tiffin did its part on Saturday, got a little help in the PSAC, so they moved into the top spot here, earned a first round buy as the top seed. The reality is they looked the part. Tiffin's got a top 10 offense in the country in pretty much every single category. Slippery Rock went into the week as the top ranked team in, in the uh, top super region but they didn't play very well and probably cost themselves a first round bye. Still though, The Rock clearly one of the top teams in the country and they're in the playoffs for a fifth straight campaign. Third longest active playoff streak nationally, by the way, second straight 10 win season for SRU and their fourth in the last five years. East Stroudsburg played its way into the field with a great win on Saturday. Warriors finished tied for the second in the league. That's a huge turnaround after finishing four and seven last fall. Very few teams were better than the Warriors in the red zone, scoring 94% of their red zone trips this year. Charleston closed the regular season in style, pumping out at least 50 points five times this season. They've got one of the most prolific offenses in Division II. Nice turnaround for the Golden Eagles after a 6-5 campaign last fall in the Mountain East, and they are the two seed in this region. Welcome back to New Haven, who won a fifth NE10 title in program history yesterday, including now two of the last three. Chargers twice rallied from three-point deficits in the second half. They beat Bentley 24-17 and clinched a postseason spot. Kutztown on the board here, the three seed. Take a bow, Golden Bears. That was an awfully impressive PSAC championship win against Slippery Rock. After starting the year 0-2, Kutztown won its next nine games in a row. They are anchored by a terrific defense. Last team in this region is Virginia Union, who won its first CIAA title in 22 years this weekend, knocking out Fayetteville State 21 to 10. 
Head coach Dr. Alvin Parker led the program in 2001 when they last won the league title. Yesterday post game, he said, quote, I remember how it felt then, but this is a little bit better. I was the leader of the program. I felt like I was leading us in the right direction, but all of the guys brought into the process, even though it wasn't easy. Enough said, congratulations to the Panthers. Wayne, what do you think about this first pot? You know, I think this is this is pretty wide open, to be honest with you. I like seeing Charleston and East Stroudsburg here, but it's a while since both of these teams have played in, in this kind of game. And we've seen in the tournament, you know, they work so hard to get here. And then the, that kind of first big game against, especially against the Slippery Rock that has all that experience that you said, uh, we, we, you know, we got, that's why they play the game. We got to see how it turns out. Uh, I do kind of think it is Slippery Rock super region to lose. I know it just lost to Kutztown, but last year we saw Shepard lose to Indiana, Pennsylvania in the PSAC championship. And just a few weeks later, you know, it was, it, they dominated them on their way to the national semifinals. And I think Slippery Rock could do the same, but it's like you said with Tiffin, they're undefeated. And not only are they undefeated with that, that high power offense, they really haven't played a close game since the middle of September. So this team is rolling and has a lot of momentum. So I think if that if if we do get to the point where we see that Tiffin slippery rock, it's going to be a shootout and it's going to be fun to watch. But I do like seeing Virginia Union here too because that's part of that we say new rule, but it, it's a more recent rule change that the committee can mix up super regions and obviously Virginia Union from Super Region Two, they could shift these teams around uh, for travel purposes. So we get a, a matchup of that's not really familiar, you know, Kutztown and Virginia Union. And I think it'll be fun to see that Kutztown defense, which showed how good it is this past weekend against J Jada Byers and that big offensive line. So I think there's a, a just every matchup is going to be really fun to watch and can go any way in this in this part of the bracket. Wide open regions are a lot of fun. That's what this time of year is all about. Let's move to our next region where the top seed is. Benedict, the Tigers won their second consecutive SIAC title after they walloped Albany State 47 to 10 yesterday. Benedict played arguably its best football the whole season in that big win, and that just might be a scary sign now for the rest of the nation. Coach Barry's team probably has the best overall defense in the country. They are unquestionably the best red zone team in Division II football. Opening round by for Benedict. They will play the winner of this next game. The four seed is Lenore Ryan, playoff bound with some momentum after winning the South Atlantic Conference this weekend. Bears dominated Tusculum 48-7. Sean White was named the league MVP as he went 19 of 30 for 305 and five touchdowns. Also no turnovers. White became the first Lenore Ryan, Lenore Ryan quarterback to throw five touchdowns in a game since Joel Rook did it back in October of 1990. As a team, the Bears threw six touchdowns yesterday. That's the most they've ever thrown in the 104 year history of the football program. Good momentum there for Lenore Ryan. They're going to play Shepard, who's back in the field, hoping to make another magical run this postseason. Rams got all the way back to the national semifinals before bowing out last season. Yesterday, they closed the year with over 600 yards of total offense in a 49 25 win over Mercyhurst. Life after Tyson Bajant went well this year. Transfer quarterback Seth Morgan led the Rams back to the postseason. Delta State returns to the playoffs. They're the two seed after winning back-to-back -back Gulf South Conference championships. Statesmen tripped up only once to West Florida, but were otherwise nearly impossible to beat. In fact, nobody played them closer than 22 points all season. Speaking of West Florida, the Argonauts made a run to the national semifinals last year and they are ready for the playoffs again this season. Kind of hard to imagine if you're not familiar with D2 ball, this is only the seventh year in program history and the fifth postseason trip for the Argos, who of course won it all back in 2019. Fourth straight playoff berth for the boys from Pensacola. Three seed in this region is Valdosta State. They finished a remarkable regular season with a thumping of West Georgia on Saturday. Valdosta 10 and one, losing to Delta State, but they pretty much destroyed every other team they played. The Blazers missed the playoff last year, but they are capable of making another run the way they did in 2021, when they were uh, last national runner up to Ferris State. Tremaine Jackson, one of the most respected coaches in the country. His team is certainly ready for another deep run in the postseason, and they have plenty of credentials. Meanwhile, senior quarterback Dustin Noller threw for a school record five touchdowns on Saturday, 
leading the Limestone Saints to a commanding 47-29 win over Emory and Henry. That closed out the regular season in style for the Saints, who got a little help from teams ranked ahead of them in last week's regional rankings. And now they are in the playoffs for the second straight year. Wayne, what do you think about that Delta State West Florida rematch there in the opening round? Man, I don't even know where to start in this part of the bracket. There's so many good games, but as you mentioned, you know, Delta State and West Florida, West Florida has been that thorn in the side to the Statesman. I think they've won, it's the, it's the last five of six now, including last year's postseason. So Delta State definitely has to figure out, um, it's a tough riddle to solve, but they, in, in the first round, at least they're, they're familiar with each other. So it, I think it's gonna be another another great game that uh, should be very exciting. But you, you know, you look at, again, Shepard was was switched from Super Region 1 into this Super Region, and Lenore Ryan and, and Shepard, we're talking about, especially in recent years, two, D, two football powerhouse with a lot of playoff experiences that we don't get to see play a lot. And I think this should be a really, really exciting game and then before we get to the last game, let's not forget about Benedict, which is absolutely deserving of the number one seed. And it, between them and, and Harding, it comes down to them at, or the Tigers as the best defense in D2 football. But last year, you know, Benedict made its 20 debut. And then in, in the second round coming off that bye, they got upset. So there's definitely an albatross here. And Benedict has a lot to prove. And with that kind of de de defense, that's dangerous for the rest of this part of the bracket. And just to get to this last game, it's like you said, Valdosta State has this history, has all these national championships, ESPN teased me and called them title town, you know, a, a few years back and, and they missed last year. So it was really nice to see them put this, this team together. And, and Sammy Edwards is this great quarterback, but let's not sleep on Limestone. They had that slow start to the season, but this offense has been scorching hot down this stretch. And they're, they're big three, you mentioned Dustin Noller. But Trey Stewart at running back and Jelani Baker at wide receiver, they're touchdown machines. This game could be 50 to 48 and everybody having a good time watching it, except the opposing coaches who are trying to figure out how to make the last stop. <laughs> uh, there's definitely some powerhouses down in what feels like the bottom right quadrant of the country, that's for sure. All right, half the bracket's been unveiled, so let's move to our third region. Where the top seed, you mentioned him just a moment ago, this top seed is the Harding Bisons, who obliterated Arkansas Tech yesterday 56 to nothing, winning the Great American Conference title this year. Program's sixth conference championship, third win in the GAC. Saturday marked Harding's fourth shutout of the season. First time the Bisons have had four shutouts in a season. They also tied a school record with negative 27 rushing yards allowed yesterday. Talk about going into the playoffs. Feeling good about the way you're competing. Harding, an opening round by. The four seed here is Central Missouri, who cruised to the playoffs after dropping 63 on Lincoln yesterday, sharing the league title with Pittsburgh State. The Mules return to the playoffs for the first time in four years. Their opening round opponent is Henderson State. The Reddies jump in the bracket here out of the GAC. They slip past Washita Baptist yesterday, 31-27. In fact, for the sixth time in the last seven meetings, the Battle of the Ravine was decided by one score. The Reddies finally beat their next door neighbors for the first time since 2015, snapping a six game losing streak and essentially knocking the Tigers out of the postseason. Just like in the Great American Conference, the GLIAC Championship was a shutout win. Number two nationally ranked Grand Valley State blanked Davenport 38 0 to win back to back conference titles and their 19th all-time championship. It's been 17 years since the Lakers last won a football national title. Perhaps 2023 will be their magical season. This is a first round matchup that'll raise some eyebrows. Certainly hasn't been an easy season for the two-time defending national champions, but Ferris State definitely did enough to warrant an invitation to defend their crown. This team still has plenty of veterans and a coaching staff that knows how to get it done this time of year. Don't be fooled by their record. They nearly beat FCS Montana and uh, crushed almost every other team they played outside of a loss to Grand Valley State. Good rematch there in, uh, in this region. Last two teams, Pittsburgh State won the MIAA for the second year in a row. They're back in the playoffs. The Gorillas forced seven turnovers in yesterday's regu uh, regular season finale. They lead the country this year in time of possession and don't seem to have a glaring weakness, so they are likely to be a tough out. They're going to host UND, the champion of the GLVC. 
It's the ninth time since the league began sponsoring football in 2012 that U Indy has come out on top. Congratulations to Chris Kievers and the Greyhounds on another really good season. Their reward is an opening round matchup on the road to take on the Gorillas. Wayne, how about that opening round matchup up in uh, Grand Rapids? Holy smokes. Yeah. Um, first of all, this is very weird for me. I've been covering D2 football for about a decade now, and there's no Northwest Missouri State. So this part of, uh, of the bracket is, is just very um, different to look at. And what I'm about to say is probably not going to make any sense, but there's no question that Ferris State is the team to beat. They have the largest target on their back. You know, it, it's five semifinals in the last six tournaments, three trips to the championship game since 2018. So this is the team to beat because they get to the, the postseason and there's a different year that they find that nobody can touch. However, they only have a couple D2 losses over the past few years and it's been Grand Valley State that's given it to them. Now, I know in the tournament, Ferris State has found the way to beat Grand Valley State, but this may be the year. Grand Valley State has been absolutely rolling. Um, their defense is clicking, their offense is clicking, and these two teams are a huge rivalry, so familiar with each other. I mean, we're talking, we couldn't see the game of the tournament in the first round. Um, you know, Harding, we talked about that defense. It's always the same thing come playoff time with, with the offense, they don't have that you know, that that fun rushing triple option um, style limits them if they have to come from behind. And, and they're like, a, like they're, they're a vice. They squeeze you. They, they suck the life out of you by running at you with seven different running backs and quarterbacks. But if, if you get ahead of them, which if you play a Central Missouri type in the second round in that offense, um, it's tough for them to come back. So it'd be interesting to see that matchup. But you got to love Henderson State, literally not even in the super regional rankings last week win that huge game in that big battle of the ravine and play their way into the tournament on the last day of the season i mean that's that's super exciting and you know with pittsburgh state they, their starting quarterback missed a last week injured so that's definitely a big question mark heading into the first round against a very tough new indie team so that's going to be a good matchup um to, to watch and pay attention to leading up to it another fun region that wayne says the favorite might not even be seated drama unfolding in uh, region three let's move to the final region there's only seven teams left to unveil and the last opening weekend by belongs to colorado school of mines many consider mines to be the best team in the country this year but it's time for the ore diggers to go prove it they were so close to winning last year's national championship after an impressive run through the region and a big semifinal win over shepherd mines beat grand valley state and angelo state to start the year this year to back up all the hype and then they've rampaged their opposition ever since then. By the way, that includes an 82 to nothing win yesterday to close out the regular season. Pete Sturbeck was named the Football Scoop D2 Coordinator of the Year last year, took over as head coach this past May, and now his team is ready for a championship chase. Mines, the top seed in the bottom region of the bracket. The fourth seed here is Augustana, the NSIC champion this year after they beat Bemidji State yesterday combined with a Minnesota State loss to Duluth. What a season for the Vikings, who had 10 wins for only the second time in program history. They've stumbled only once all year, a 14-12 loss to Wayne State a couple weeks ago. But Augustana has proven time and again they are worthy of a playoff berth. Boy, this is one that's going to raise some eyebrows. Minnesota State earns an invitation here, ending a nervous wait for the Mavericks after dropping yesterday's big game to Duluth, 33-21. Mavericks know how to get it done though this time of year. They won an opening round game last year, painstakingly close to knocking out Mines on the road last season. This year's Mavs have the fourth best red zone defense in the country. The two seed is Western Colorado. The Mountaineers have had an outstanding season in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, losing only once to Mines a couple weeks ago. Still, they look like one of the premier teams in the region and certainly have earned the, uh, earned the two seed here. Their offense bolstered by Davon Butler, who leads the league in rushing. Second trip to the playoffs in the last three years now for Coach Baines and company. Central Washington had a great run through the LSC that ultimately came up without a title. They still get a playoff berth. Wildcats open the year with losses to Weber State in the FCS and Montana Tech in the NAIA. They look great with seven straight wins until falling yesterday to Texas Permian Basin. 
Speaking of the Falcons, they're up next. Texas Permian Basin picked to finish seventh in the preseason poll in the Lone Star. How'd they do? Well, they went out and won the conference title yesterday, emphatically beating Central Washington 42 to 14. Now, at a macro level, they responded to a week two loss to Western Colorado with some pretty gaudy offensive numbers the rest of the season. It's a top 10 team offensively any way you slice it, and they lead the nation in fourth down conversion percentage. And the very last team on the bracket is Bemidji State, the Beavers. Pretty frustrating close to the regular season on Saturday against Augustana, but thanks to Duluth's help in knocking off Minnesota State yesterday, the Beavers' loss was not enough to knock them out of the playoff picture. Wayne, Mines gets the top seed here. What do you think it's going to take to knock them out? Um, a miracle, maybe? No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, you said many think that this is the number one team in, in the country, and, and it is. It's not just that they're winning games. They they absolutely romped through the RMAC. I mean, the games weren't even close. They, they put up 82 points yesterday in the last game of the season. But they also have those big ranked wins. They beat Grand Valley State. They beat Angelo State. They beat Western Colorado. And, they, and, and when you have that kind of momentum, and this guy named John Matoka under center, who seems to set a new D2 football record every week he plays, or even the NCAA football record, all levels. He's one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it at this level, and, and he's leading the charge. And you know, when it comes to the tournament, we talk a lot about momentum. And three of the teams in this bracket, uh, part of the bracket, are coming in off losses. That's not the kind of momentum you're looking for. but. That makes one of the teams, you know, you, you mentioned them, Permian Basin. Um, it makes them one of the more exciting teams to watch here and kind of see what they could do now that they're here. You said um, even their own conference, they didn't have them ranked very highly coming in. Uh, their quarterback that they, they went out and they got him the, in the transfer portal, Kenny Hernser. He, he's just been absolutely terrific. He's a multi touchdown machine. I think he has five touchdowns in four different games this year. Um, but you're even though Bemidji State has, is coming off that loss, you're talking about a team that's very experienced in recent years in the tournament versus a team that's very inexperienced. And how does that kind of, you know, outweigh the momentum at this time of year? So I think that you could say that about all three of these matchups in the first round, and, and especially that Augustana, Minnesota State. You know, Minnesota State has had a, a rough last four games of the season. They've lost two. They played a tight one with Winona State. And Augustana is just, they just keep seeming to win ball games. So um, I, I think it's going to be a very interesting part of the bracket. And um, I'm, I'm not looking forward to having to predict it uh, for my bracket picks tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask you to, to uh, predict it any sooner than you would otherwise predict it. So let's say this if you think it might take a miracle for Colorado School of the Mines to get knocked off, even if that might be a little tongue in cheek, um, I, I'm curious when you see these four regions. Is there a school that you think, man, I kind of like their potential route here as they try to work their way toward McKinney? You know, every year I, I think I do and it, I don't and it doesn't work out that way. So, <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of the beauty of it all. The, the last two years have kind of been, um, you know, the top seeds are the teams that, that, that pull it off. And I think this year, what we've seen in the last few weeks is that anybody, especially in that Super Region 4, Anybody could beat anybody. And and I think that's what, again, I, I started the show with it and I'll, and I'll finish it. I think that's what makes our tournament at the YouTube football level so, so great is that it really is, you know, they in the NFL, they say any given Sunday. Well, it's any given Saturday. And and I think that's why you play the game. And, and I don't think anyone has a clear road, even Colorado School of Mines that, that has all this momentum and all this experience the past two seasons of going deep in the tournament. They're still going to have to go out there and work every game. And uh, I just don't think there's an odds on favor to to win it all. Well, that's uh, that's part of what makes it so much fun. I think there's a lot of parity in Division two football right now. And we are certainly uh, we appear to be poised for some great playoff games. Wayne, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time. All right, that's it. All 28 teams that will have a chance to compete for a national championship this fall. Of course, for the latest tournament information over the next few weeks. Just keep your eyes right here on NCAA.com, and you can also check out the school websites, especially for each of the home institutions if you're looking for ticketing information. I'm Brendan Gulick. Good night from our studio in Indianapolis. Good luck to everybody competing in the next few weeks, and we sure hope to see you in Greater Dallas on December 16th.
If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of freaking out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed.